Hello there and welcome to Luminar Neo All Sliders Explained, the show where we describe and explain you every single slider in this powerful photo editing application. Now if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder of Clever Photographer. Now before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, we're going to give you our own and very popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So stay until the end so you can get your own copy. The second, if you want to follow us along, make sure you head into the description, follow the link there and get your sample files before we're going to start. If you don't own Luminar Neo, you can also follow the link in the description and use our own discount code Clever Photographer. That way you get additional 20% off and you can get your own copy. And finally, we want to ask you to like and comment on our videos and also follow our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In today's video tutorial, we're going to be looking at the Relight AI tool located in the Creative Tools inside of Luminar Neo's editing module. So as you can see, we are inside of the Luminar Neo and we are already in the editing module right here. So we are moving our focus towards the Creative Tools right here and today we are looking at the Relight AI. Now the Relight AI is one of the new AI powered tools in Luminar Neo. And what it does, it analyzes your images to find subjects and objects, as well as determine relative depth of those subjects and objects in the scene. How crazy is that? The tool creates a 3D depth map of a scene and presents a handful of simple sliders to quickly rebalance the exposure and temperature of the scene. So as you can see, we have it open. We have a six sliders right here, which really helps extremely to very quickly adjust the exposure of the foreground and a background and also change their warmth. Let's have a look at the sliders first of all, and then we do a bunch of testing on the different photography styles. Starting with the brightness near. This slider adjusts the brightness of the subjects and objects that are close to the camera. Moving to the brightness far, this adjusts the brightness of the subjects and objects that are far from the camera. And to balance it off, we have the depth slider, which influences the depth math to change what is considered near and far from the camera. So those are the three sliders, the very basic sliders. And let me give you a quick tip of how to work with them. So we have the subject right here and let's bring the brightness near all the way up. So at this moment, we are brightening everything that is near to the camera and what the application accept as being the part of the image which is near to the camera. And now what we want to do is take the brightness far and bring it all the way down. And that way we are making the part that is far from the camera darker. So now we can really clearly see the difference of the far area and the near area. And by being able to see that now we can adjust the depth. So by sliding it, you can either bring the far area closer and make more space on the image being considered as far, or you can adjust the mask the other way around and you can basically increase the area that is considered as near. So this really helps you to fine tune the position of the mask and see what you're going to be adjusting at the same time. So I think I like something like this. So that way I kind of consider everything here to be at the back or far and everything here to be in front and being near. So once I'm happy with it, I can just reset the sliders and you can do that by double clicking on the name of the slider. Usually that resets the slider to the original value or to zero. And now I can very simply adjust whatever I need. So what I want to do on this image is to bring the brightness of the foreground and the near area down just a little bit. So something like this, you can see everything's getting a little bit darker. Maybe that's a bit too much and just increase the brightness at the far area. So something like this, just to make it look like it glows a little bit more. So I like this result. However, I can do further adjustments to it. So let's move to the advanced settings. If for some reason you don't see the advanced settings, you just click on this little arrow here and that will show them. So we have a three sliders here and let's talk about them, starting with the dehalo. So the dehalo slider reduces the halo at the high contrast edges. 
The Dehalo slider is useful when the brightness of warm sliders are more strongly polarized. So basically when you really push these sliders, so for example, the brightness here all the way, and it's not really visible on this subject, but I will cover it when we go to something like a portrait. Sometimes you get the halo on the edges of the mask and the Dehalo slider can reduce it really well. So I will show you that when we move to the portrait adjustments. So let's just reset this again. And we wanted to make the uh, foreground darker and background brighter, so something like this. And we are going back to our other sliders here, the warmth near and warmth far. So you can imagine what the near and far means. So again, it's covering the same area as the brightness near and brightness far. So they are very much connected and they share the same mask created by the Relight AI and adjusted with the depth. So obviously the warmth near, warmth or cool subject and object that are close to the camera, depending on the mask, and the warm far, warmth or cool subjects and objects that are far from the camera. So again, we have this area right here being a little bit cool and green, so we can just increase the warmth of the area, and that's the area being far, so we go into warmth far, and we just increase the warmth right there and the area closer to the camera, we can make it a little bit cooler and create even further color contrast. And that would be the result right here. Let me show you before the adjustment and after. It's a completely different image. And when you think that we only use six sliders to do all of this, it's really crazy. What I really like is that once you get familiar with this tool, you can just jump in, it takes a few seconds and you can make a really powerful light adjustment. And now we're going to see how well this tool works on other photography styles. Let's go to catalog and we're going to start with portrait photography. So we have a two portraits here. Let's use this image right here. We're going to just reset the adjustments to make sure that it's ready for us. And then we can move to the editing module and we're going back to our Relight AI right here. So once again, it's the same workflow, brightness near all the way up brightness far all the way down, so we can really set our depth correctly. So looking at it right here, obviously the person right in front is set right. However, we still have some areas here and we would like them to be darker. We would like them to be part of the far area. So we go into our depth and we bring the depth down. And as you can see, as I'm moving the slider down, the darkness is kind of increasing to this area, which means that we adjusting the mask and we adding these areas to the far part of the slider right here. So I think something like this works quite nice. So we can reset our sliders. And now all we need to do is to make the artistic decision. And I think what we should do is we make the background a little bit darker and we make the lady a little bit brighter. So what we're gonna do, brightness far, so the background, we're gonna bring it down to make it a little bit darker and brightness near, which is this area of the face and the body, we're gonna bring it up a little bit. Now we don't wanna go over the board so it doesn't look realistic, but I think something like this looks very cool. Let's just check before and after and I'm happy with the result. Now we're gonna move back to the catalog and we use the second portrait, going back to editing module, moving to our relight and same workflow, brightness near, brightness far. And I think it's set pretty well. Uh, this area, well, let's just make it a little bit uh, less adjusted like this. So again, what we're looking for, everything that is dark is a part of the brightness far slider. Everything that is bright is a part of the brightness near slider. So we just wanna adjust that. And I think something like this works quite well. So we reset our sliders. And uh, this is a good opportunity to show you how to dehalo works. So when I push the brightness near all the way and I push the brightness far all the way down, you'll see how you get this little glow at these areas and around her hair and also around her body right here. And when I bring the dehalo all the way down, you can see how it even increase, how you're getting these artifacts around her head and around her body. And that's what I was describing as the halos. So now I can bring back the halo and I can keep pushing it and you can see how the halo starting to disappear. Now it's never really a good practice to push the sliders all the way like this. However, pushing the dehalo to somewhere around 60 is always a good idea. And then adjusting the sliders to make the result a little bit more natural. So let's just go back. Let's leave the Dehalo on 60. Brightness 
far, maybe not that dark, maybe something like this. And brightness near, we don't want to make it that bright, just maybe something like this. So I think you notice on the two portraits that the Real Light AI does a really good job when it comes to human and portraits. So let's see how well it's going to do with food. So we have this lovely cake right here. Going back to edit module. So the workflow is pretty much the same. Brightness near all the way, brightness far all the way. And now we can see the mask. Now, as you notice, uh, the mask isn't as even. You get more darker areas here than you get on this side here. And when I try to adjust it with the depth, as you can see, the mask is kind of moving sideways. And the reason being that it's not only looking for the horizon and levels, but let him show you before. Oh, let's reset the tool completely. Uh, you can see that on the image, it also follows the brightness and the luminance because this part is actually a little bit darker than this part. And so that way it's actually quite smart. It doesn't just use the levels, but it used the luminance of the image. And I think that is very, very cool. So once again, let's adjust our mask. Um, I think something like this, we actually wanna remove some part of the cake from the far and bring it to the near. And now we can reset the sliders and we can make the cake a little bit brighter and we can make the background little bit darker. So I think for food photographers and food stylists there, this is also really handy because again, you don't have to select the whole cake and everything around it. You can just give it a go and try the brightness and the complete real light AI to see if that could help you and speed up the process. So that was an example of how you can use this tool in food photography. And let's finish it off by trying it in the interior design. So we're gonna use this image, going back to edit, Relight and again the same workflow brightness near brightness far and again we can see that the mask is selected for us let's see when we move the depth um, it's kind of moving nicely into the room what i like is that it's trying to select the table it's keeping this part also selected so i think perhaps something like this reset our sliders and what we're gonna do, uh, brightness near, can we make it a little bit darker? We can, so that I think looks a little bit more natural. And then we can make the background a little bit brighter. So I think something like this, maybe not, not that much brightness, but I think it's looking good. And then we can work around with the warmth as well. Let's see if we make the near warmth a little bit cooler, and then we warm up the back, not crazily, but to something like this. So there you have it. I think super powerful real light AI tool that can be used across multiple different photography styles. You can adjust the brightness as well as the warmth by using the super cool 3D masking tool. So I really hope it's going to be helpful for you and I hope it's going to speed up your photo editing process. So now it's time to get your own Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. All you have to do is to head to our website, cleverphotographer.com slash luminargift and get it right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a fun and I hope you learned something new. Please don't forget to follow our channel and also check out our other videos covering Luminar Neo. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next one.